on this Sunday leading up to Christmas, I just want to briefly talk to you from the subject I feel like singing. I feel like singing. My brothers and sisters, you can really tell that Christmas is right around the corner. The telltale signs of Christmas aren't too hard to find. The Christmas tree lots have sprung up in many places around town. And many of them have already sold out the majority of their trees. When you turn on the television, almost every commercial encourages us to run down to some store and take advantage of their big Christmas sale. As you enter and exit stores like Walmart and Target, the familiar sound of the Salvation Army bells ringing will reach your ears. It is pretty obvious, New Providence, that Christmas is right around the corner. But do you know what really makes me realize and know that Christmas is near? Well. Apart from all the decorations, apart from all the lights, apart from all the Merry Christmases that I receive from people who would normally not speak to me, the number one thing that really brings home the reality of Christmas is the sound of Christmas music playing everywhere. Walk into any department store, Christmas music is playing. Walk into your favorite restaurant and you'll discover that most likely you'll hear Christmas music. Turn your radio on, and most likely you won't have to wait too long before you hear a Christmas song. Many of us from our childhood learned the songs that were and are still traditionally sung at Christmas time. Right. It's hard for some of us to remember the words to popular hymns, like the old rugged cross, the words to what a friend we have in Jesus. But don't start singing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or jingle bells, we will drown you out. I have discovered that when Christmas time comes around, something happens to people. People who regularly don't feel like singing catch singing frenzy. <laughs> there is something about Christmas and singing that goes hand in hand. And while there is nothing wrong with singing the secular songs attached to Christmas, if you are a believer in Christ, if those are the only songs in your heart, if they are the only songs on your lips, then we are guilty of neglecting 
the greatest gift our God has ever given to us. Today, in our text, we have a great example of a Christmas song. In the verses of this Luke text, we find actually the very first Christmas song ever written. This song doesn't talk about jingling bells, doesn't talk about holly, doesn't talk about reindeers or Santa Claus. It has nothing to do with snow or sleigh bells. This first Christmas song has something to do with what makes Christmas Christmas. This song was all about sin and salvation. The free gift of God's grace sent to a fallen human race. This first Christmas song sung here in this Luke text was all about Jesus. This song was not sung by angels, wasn't sung by priests, wasn't sung by prophets. No, it was sung by an humble young woman whom God had chosen to bear his son. Her name was Mary, the human mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Mary was just an ordinary girl that God chose to play a part in his plan to save the world. Her song, the Magnificat, the first Christmas song ever sung, is a reflection of her faith. Faith that believed that God loves sinners. Faith that believed that God could even love and use a sinner just like her. <laughs> Now, we need to get something clear here. There was nothing extra special about Mary that made God choose her. She didn't deserve God's favor or earn the privilege to be the human vehicle in which God would use to bring his son into the world. No, God chose her. She was a recipient of God's grace. And I'm so glad that God chooses whom his will is to accomplish his purposes on the earth. Some of us here today would have been disqualified if it was left up to man to select. But we must take notice of the fact that Mary's song does not reflect the faith that Mary came up with on her own. No, she was expressing the faith that God had created in her through hearing his word delivered by the angel Gabriel. The fact that Mary believed is not a credit to her. It is a credit to her God. Her faith was a gift from God. And her faith 
Her song points us this day straight back to God. This song here written here in Luke isn't about Mary at all. It's all about Jesus. Let's take a closer look at this song of praise. It is strikingly similar to many of the Psalms in the Old Testament. Mary was a child of Israel. She believed in God. She had heard the word of God through the scriptures of now what we call the Old Testament. It is no wonder then that her song used some of the same words found in many of the Psalms. Her praise to God is patterned after the praises of the faithful who had gone before her. Brothers and sisters, many of our songs today do the same exact thing. We sing back to God the very word he has given us. We sing back the words that you didn't know it when you read your Bible, when you look at the Psalms, we sing songs like, the Lord is my life. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? We're just singing back what God has already promised. Uh, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. We just sing back what God has already promised. Mary was singing back to God what he had promised to give in the past. Because before her very eyes, those promises were coming true. Before her very eyes, the miracle of miracles was taking place in her womb. In verses 46 and 47, Mary says, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. In verses 48 and 49, Mary sings, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Listen to me, New Providence. There is great significance behind Mary's statement that all generations will call me blessed. There are just a few references to things in the Old Testament that will last for all generations. Matter of fact, there are only eight things listed in the Old Testament that will last for all generations. What are they, Pastor Wood? I'm glad you asked. The Lord's name will last all generations. His will, his praise, his faithfulness, his reign, his truth, his forgiveness, and his presence will last for all generations. Now remember, 
that this song is not about Mary. It's all about Jesus. And the reason all generations will call her blessed is because the embodiment of all the promises of God is growing when she sings in her belly. Growing within her is Jesus, the anointed one, the only begotten son of God. Jesus, God's truth. Jesus, God's faithfulness. Jesus, God's forgiveness. Jesus, the Son of God, is present with all his people. Jesus will provide God's full salvation for all generations. He is the one through whom all the world will be saved. He's not just Mary's baby, but as she sings this song of praise, she also realizes that he is her savior. That is why she is blessed, because she has the Holy One within her. Now, if you are a believer today, lean over and tell your neighbor, I'm blessed too. Why are you blessed? Because you have Jesus, the Holy One, in you. Note with me that this song of marriage was not sung 34 years after Jesus was born. This is not a song that remembers events of the past. It is a song of faith. Faith that looks forward. You see, at the time that Mary sung this song, Mary did not know all the details of how her son would save the world. But she simply believed God's word that said that Jesus would save the world. For Mary, the main event is not the birth of this child, but the salvation he would one day bring to all the earth. It is the same for you and I as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. We joyfully remember the birth of our Lord. But his birth is not our primary focus. You see, when we peer into the manger and see the baby Jesus, we also have to see the shadow of the cross. You see, it's not Christ's birth that sets us free. But the death that he died in our place. It is not a manger that assures us of our salvation. But it's an open tomb. And the reason we have comfort and hope in the words of the angels at the beginning of Luke's gospel, who said today in the town of Bethlehem, the city of David, 
a Savior is born. It's because of these words that those same angels speak at the end of Luke's gospel. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen just as he said. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, just as Mary sung a song of praise to our Lord, I thought that you would want to know that on this Sunday, I want to create my own song and sing a praise unto the Lord. I feel like singing. Anybody in here feel like singing? Has the Lord been good to you? Has he been merciful? Has he been kind? Has he brought you, not from a mighty long way, but all the way? I feel like singing New Providence. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. How you know, Pastor? He walks with me and talks with me upon life's narrow way. Oh, he lives. He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he within my heart. I, 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 I feel like singing. Can y'all catch me? Y'all can catch me. There's not a friend like the lonely. <laughs> no, not one. <laughs> no, not. None else can heal. None else could heal. All my souls deep. No, not one. No. No, not one. No, not. Jesus knows all about. All about. Uh, he will guide, he will guide us till the day is. There's not a friend, there's no, not one. No, no, not one. Come on, stand to your feet all over the church. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I. I told him to get because victory victory is mine victory victory oh 
victory today is mine because I told him to get all victory. Come on and sing with me. Joy, joy. In. Do you have joy? Do you have joy? Joy, today is mine. Oh, I, I told him to get. I know joy today is mine. Happiness is mine. Happiness, happiness is mine. Oh, happiness today. I told Satan to get behind me. Oh, happiness. Lean up and tell your neighbor, say, I feel like singing. God has been good to me. And he's worthy to be praised on this Sunday morning. I told Satan, get victory today is mine. As you prepare to go through this season of Christmas. Let the Lord bring a song in your heart. He'll do it every time. I refuse to be depressed. Point at your neighbor and say, I bind that spirit of depression. Now look at him and say, I release joy. This is a happy time for us believers. For God so loved us that he sent into the world his only, it ain't about no gifts. ain't about what's under no tree. If the Lord wake you up, then wake up that morning. That's enough. <laughs> you still got a roof over your head? That's enough. You still have a reasonable portion of health and strength? That's enough. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, keep the song in your heart. Keep the song in your heart. Keep the song. Don't you let folk ruin your song. <laughs> 